At this point, you know, health has to do with balance and disease with imbalance. Imbalance in the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, muscle protein synthesis to catabolism, inflammatory to anti-inflammatory processes, and stress to recovery. The undeniable reality is that chronic stress is the cause of most modern diseases. Today, you are going to learn how to enhance your recovery response to the elements that stress you out. But first, you have to understand what the autonomic nervous system is. The nervous system splits into two functional branches. The somatic nervous system, which greatly simplified, allows us to perform voluntary movements and also collect sensory information from the outside, take it to the brain and interpret it. And the second branch of the nervous system, which is the one we are talking about today, the autonomic nervous system. Autonomous because it controls all the involuntary processes of the body, your heart rate, your respiratory rate, your body temperature, digestive movements. The autonomic nervous system further divides into two branches, the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic is the one that prepares us to fight or flee, the one that sets up the whole stress hormone setup, cortisol and catecholamines, and therefore it is also the executor arm of chronic stress. The parasympathetic does the exact opposite because it is involved in repair processes, recovery and regeneration. It activates, as you can imagine, during nighttime sleep, during a nap, during the hours after eating, and when you're relaxed, like I am right now. The first question I ask you is, towards which branch of the autonomic nervous system do you think there's currently an imbalance? Obviously, there is a very significant imbalance at the population level towards the sympathetic nervous system, which is clearly reflected in the chronic stress pandemic we all experience. We have an overactive sympathetic and a very underactive parasympathetic. And when there is an imbalance between two factors, one being hypertrophied and the other underdeveloped, we have two options. Reduce the size of the first, that would be chronic stress, or enhance the second, the recovery response, the parasympathetic nervous system. Battling chronic stress these days is like fighting a pervasive giant. Of course, we can do things we've seen in videos, but we can also do something uncommon that I haven't yet discussed with you. Boost your recovery responses, enhance your parasympathetic nervous system, for this, you have to understand who is the protagonist of this area of your nervous system. It's the famous vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is one of the longest and most complex cranial nerves in the human body. It's called vagus due to its wandering path. From the Latin vagus, which means wandering, that crosses multiple organs from the brain to the abdomen. And this super nervous highway has a wide range of functions, regulating involuntary activities that are crucial for survival. Let's take a look at the main functions of the vagus nerve. First, managing heart and lungs. It regulates heart rate and breathing. The greater the vagal tone in the heart, the better the overall cardiovascular health. Also, more heart rate variability, more heart rate variability, more relaxation, and even more feeling of emotions like empathy. Interesting. Physical exercise significantly promotes cardiac vagal tone. So now you know one thing you can do to improve vagal tone. It aids digestion by promoting stomach and intestine movement for food digestion and absorption. In fact, lower parasympathetic activity is associated with irritable bowel syndrome and inflammatory bowel disease. Lower vagal tone implies poorer digestive health. As for the immune response, it influences inflammation in your body's immune response. Vagal stimulation reduces the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines and modulates inflammation responses. The question is, Borja, okay, fantastic. If the parasympathetic is not very active, why do we live wrapped in an unbearable whirlwind of stress? Can we do something to stimulate the vagus nerve and increase parasympathetic activity? Well, the answer is yes, we can do many things. Look, the most obvious, the simplest regular aerobic training, the intake of probiotic foods as well, controlled exposure to cold water, meditation, breathing exercises, or a simple nap, as simple as that. Even simpler, just by slowing down the work pace and resting a bit more, easier said than done. The clinical modulation of parasympathetic activity is so interesting that researchers and clinicians realized years ago that by directly stimulating the vagus nerve with electrodes, they achieved improvements in many pathologies. Indeed, this is the origin of vagus nerve neuromodulation. Indeed, it's a therapy utilized worldwide in hospitals, food and drug administration, approved for three conditions, refractory epilepsy, morbid obesity, and treatment-resistant depression. You might ask, what does depression have to do with this? Let me clarify. The issue is its infrequent use. You may wonder why Borja, if it's beneficial, simply it's underused. Little because it's invasive, meaning you have to surgically implant electrodes that will directly stimulate the vagus nerve, and this is not very accessible. No one who isn't truly suffering would do something like this. 
in an attempt to improve their health. But luckily, a few years ago, non-invasive vagus nerve neuromodulation was born, meaning we can directly activate the vagus nerve through the skin without the need for surgical intervention. This is what is called transcutaneous stimulation through the skin of the vagus nerve and is achieved through its afferent branches, those that reach the brain, that is, by stimulating those branches of the nerve that collect sensory information and carry it to the brain. These devices activate the vagus nerve by placing electrodes directly on the tragus. This region of the ear, using low-intensity electrical currents that feel like a tingling or tickling sensation can stimulate the vagus nerve, activating as we said the vagal afferent pathways that reach the cerebral cortex and exert their effects. What impact? Let's examine the scientific evidence I've reviewed to create this video. Ah. I have to admit that a few months ago when I started researching neuromodulation, I was quite skeptical, partly because I was unfamiliar with the subject and partly because it was quite suspicious. Another device that will end up on the shelf, I thought. However, after two months of using the device and reading evidence, I think I was wrong. Neurosim has 30 clinical trials in, with independent funding at the time of recording the video, and interesting results, not miraculous, but interesting. We are going to address different clinical conditions where neuromodulation may have a place. Depression. Could vagus nerve neuromodulation help people with resistant depression? Well, it seems so. Although the etiology of depression is multifactorial and there is not a single thing that will cure it forever, the truth is that in depression there is a low vagal tone, a suboptimal activation of the vagus nerve and a low heart rate variability, heart rate variability parameters that improve with neurostimulation. Then there is another key element. The alteration of the gut microbiota brain is also behind the etiology of depression and improving this aspect clearly improves symptoms in many patients. The main nervous link between brain and gut is the vagus nerve as we have said before in depression. There is almost invariably low vagal tone and enhancing this activation of the vagus generates an anti-inflammatory effect at the digestive level but also systemic that explains why most people reduce their digestive symptoms with prolonged use and also and this is interesting because of this bidirectional communication they improve their mood. Earlier I mentioned heart rate variability. The reduction in heart rate variability is a non-invasive marker, easy to perform, that you can do right now with your mobile phone at home, and that is present in mental health problems such as burnout syndrome, anxiety or depression. What's common among the three? Chronic stress. Next improvement area, reducing chronic stress. As mentioned, a low heart rate variability is linked to increased morbidity, mortality in various diseases and chronic stress. Heart rate variability is the variability in the time that the consecutive period between two beats lasts. Again, the inconsistency in the duration between two successive beats. It is the least invasive marker we have to monitor our autonomic function, the function of the autonomic nervous system. A low heart rate variability tells us about an autonomic nervous system unbalanced towards the sympathetic branch. Stress, fight, flight. A higher heart rate variability would be protective against pathologies related to oxidative stress and excessive inflammatory response. This would include the majority of non-communicable chronic diseases, and vagus nerve neurostimulation increases heart rate variability in a short time. If you find it hard to understand, you can think of heart rate variability as your ability to respond to stress. Stress is not bad per se. What's bad is not having the tools to recover from it. Of chronic inflammation, this study from 2024 reflects it very well. Stimulation of the afferent branches of the vagus nerve modulates the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. On the other hand, the efferent pathways that leave the brain towards peripheral organs release acetylcholine, activating nicotinic receptors that modulate the immune response, reducing inflammatory molecules like tumor necrosis factor alpha. These are the vagus nervous 2 anti-inflammatory pathways. Indeed, fascinating evidence exists. For instance, in heart failure patients with preserved ejection fraction, neurostimulation decreases inflammatory markers and enhances vascular function. And let's finish with the last area where I believe vagus nerve modulation will have a lot to say in the coming years, the digestive sphere. As you already know, the vagus nerve is the nerve highway through which your brain and digestive system connect in a bidirectional way from top to bottom and from bottom to top. This bidirectionality is amazing, providing two ways to enhance top down and bottom up, as I've mentioned. Digestive pathologies often result from an imbalance between sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. Patients with Crohn's disease have lower vagal tone than healthy people. For instance, in this pilot study with just seven Crohn's patients, five reached remission within three months of vagus nerve stimulation therapy. Note, this doesn't always succeed or work for all. Moreover, it's a very small study. 
In this 12-month period, 5 out of 9 patients achieved clinical remission within a year. As you can see, the studies are still very small and insufficient, but there is still interest in this topic and a body of evidence is still being generated on this topic since the side effects of this therapy are practically nil. Now I want to tell you about my totally subjective experience using this device for two and a half months. Important, my results may or may not be the ones you are going to find. The first thing is to explain that using this is very easy. It literally has two buttons, on off and intensity modulation and then an OK button. You put it here in the drink, this part of the ear lights up, you notice it, you start to notice the electric current and you forget until the timer is at zero. You can select the time you want to use it, 10, 15, 20, up to 40 minutes. And also the interesting thing about this is that you can be doing anything else while you use it. I put it on while watching a series or reading or even sometimes working. How did I feel? Initially, I simply noticed falling asleep a bit easier. Also, the night's sleep was more restful, which is significant. However, the most intriguing changes occurred later, after the initial week of use. And here I do want to make a point, because probably using this sporadically, once, whenever you remember, or two or three times a week, may not achieve the benefits it can really achieve. You need consistency, ideally using it at the same time each day, be it morning or evening, but daily. Use it daily for at least 30 minutes to 2 hours, 3 hours or more. There is no limit, but maintain consistency. Use it every day from Monday to Sunday. Well, uh, as I was saying, the, the most interesting uh, changes came after the first week of use and I would divide them into three, uh, anxiety, sports recovery and digestive symptoms. As for anxiety, the last few months have not been too easy uh, as I have had many changes at the same time that I have tried to maintain the same work pace and well, that is not easy. The anxiety moments lessened in intensity, they became more bearable, but they certainly persisted. In the sports field, you know that I train a lot, there are days that I double session, and one of the most important elements for anyone who is interested in their physical performance is recovery. How long it takes to recover, and what quality of recovery you have using the neurostimulator, I don't know if through the improvement of night sleep or directly through other ways I recover better in training, and I arrive much less tired to the second session, and I can do several double sessions a week and continue performing normally, I essentially reduce recovery times. Naturally, this has significantly impacted the results and competition. Finally, improvements in digestion. Digestive symptoms have significantly improved, a result I honestly didn't anticipate. Less abdominal bloating, less gas, and lighter digestions. As I told you before, you can improve your vagal tone in many ways, aerobic exercise being one of the most effective, but if you think a neurostimulation device can help you, and always after consulting your health provider, I leave the information in the description and the pinned comment of the video. If you wish to explore this topic further, I've provided some scientific articles in the description. I hope this video was helpful. See you next time. Keep empowering, big hug.